Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Just to let you know that my website, jasonnewland.com, is coming along quite nice. Not every single one of my recordings is available on there yet. And today is the 11th of, or what, September 2019. So if you're listening to this in 2043, then yeah, everything is on there. But I've just got under 900 recordings available on there at the moment. So I'm in the middle of uploading. It's not so much uploading, just embedding the podcast player into the posts so I'm doing the self-help and self-development podcast some good stuff in there actually but uh, excuse me that's what I'm up doing at the moment and then there's probably another Four, eight, probably another ten, ten, maybe fifteen podcasts uh, that I'll be adding. So I'll be interested to find out how many recordings there are all together. I know it's over a thousand, but I'll just be interested to kind of see the total. And I would say that 2019 has been my, the most I've produced. And it's got me thinking. And uh, did I say only listen when you can safely close your eyes? So I'm going to be talking a little bit about my life. Some personal stuff, so it might not be uh, quite as, I don't know, it, it might be a little bit different to maybe some of the other recordings, so it might be a bit boring, but in a different way, kind of uh, boring as in, what are you telling me this for? Say something silly. So, they may be less silly stuff than normal. Um, but it's up to you. It's it's going to talk about... I will talk about my... Uh, illness, disability, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just... I don't want to go into details. Just... We talked about some of the... Um, some of the questions I've had in my head today... As I tap my head, scratch my scalp. I just had a really unusual day. I say today, it was yesterday, but um, so here's here's the thing. I had an appointment to get help with filling in my PIP review form. And it's like a benefit uh, that we get, or that I get, uh, for like a disability benefit for the bipolar. And I I've, I've had I've filled in two of these forms before. 
uh, I think one was in 2014, then 2017, and now 2019. And I've had help uh, all three times, including today. The previous times just seemed a bit easier. This was by far one of the um, the hardest ones I've ever done, and it was well, when the appointment was one thirty this afternoon or yesterday afternoon, and I got out of there by I guess it was like quarter pa quarter past four. Maybe half past four. Um, so that, and I was in there at five past one, so I got in there early, um, just because that's the buses and just that's the time I got in. I wanted to make sure I got in early. So to start with, I see I I, I sleep quite well. which is probably good news for people that listen to my insomnia sessions uh, that I don't generally have any issues with sleeping although I have in the past had a lot of problems with sleeping but not these days and I generally so I thought I was going to cough then. I genuinely, generally sleep during the day. So I, I don't sleep at night. Um, there's, a, there's a few different reasons for that, but the I try and make use of being awake during the night to make recordings and maybe work on a website, you know, watch a movie, you know listen to some music, play with Andre, you know, just things like that. And it's quiet, usually, generally quite quiet. Um, and I like this time of the day. It's it's one thirty-five in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, one thirty-five. It's one of the, my, my favourite times. And generally I'd go to bed. On a good day I'd go to bed about four. Sometimes a bit earlier. Sometimes three. Sometimes six. Sometimes eight. Sometimes a lot later. But generally I'm in bed by seven. usually the cut off point in the morning when I go to bed. It's usually more around the six o'clock mark. And because I knew I had to get up on Tuesday to, uh, to go to this thing, and I set my alarm, I did go to bed early. I haven't felt particularly good the last couple of days. I've not made any recordings. And then I... Oh, man, I struggled to get out of bed, but I did it. I had a bath. I did all the things I just really didn't want to do, but I just did it. I didn't have, I didn't have any breakfast cereal, so... I mean, luckily, I found some porridge or some ready break that I had. So I had a little bit of milk, so I had some of that. Didn't have time for a cup of coffee, so I'm just a little bit. It's just it's just lucky that it wasn't hot because having a bath in the summer when it's hot, I end up spending the next hour sweating. It's like uh, internal sauna, but uh, I got the bus, got on there, got to where I was going. 
had a really strange thing. I went to the shop and I got a bottle of Coke. I was going to get a bottle of water, but for some reason I just got a bottle of Coke. And I'm standing outside the shop. And it's, this is superficial. I'll warn you before I start. I'm not going to go into details again. But I just saw what I can only explain as some kind of angelic figure walking across the road, the other side of the road, walking past. And it's this, this lady, she, she walks past and I'm just transfixed. I literally just can't take my eyes off her. And she looked over at me and smiled. And she chucked a carrot at me. And it hit me in the eye. No, that, that bit didn't happen. And I was like... Oh. It was just really strange. I just... Because I... <sighs> It's hard to explain, but it's, you know, I was just like wowed. It was one of those wow moments. I was like, uh -huh. Very strange. And I think what's happened is I live in a, a university town. And every September... I don't spend, I rarely go into town, I rarely leave my home to be fair, but I noticed this when I did live in town, every September the town seemed to be full of new people, uh, not just uh, like young students, but you know, adult students and people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, and because there's a college and there's also a university as well. So the big college and a big university. Uh, plus you've got the the, col uh, the hospital as a university as well. So all these so there's lots of new people arrive every year. So I'm thinking maybe she's one of them because this isn't someone that I would ever forget seeing. He's kind of etched in my memory now. It's very strange. Um, but yeah, so that was just part of me was thinking, oh, I wish I'd just gone over and said hello to her. But what is there to say? It's just weird, isn't it, going up to someone saying, hello, I just wanted to say hello to you. I hope that's okay if I say hello. My name is Jason. What's your name? Oh, Tangerine. What a lovely name. I used to have a cat called Tangerine. It's, I don't know what, what, it's, you know, there'd be no reason for, for me to go over there. And I do believe that everyone should be able to just walk down the street without being harassed. <laughs> you know, they should... Should be able to just walk around without being hit on by men or women or anything. But, and I just, you know, I know that this is someone that probably gets way too much attention as it is. So, probably kind of annoying for her, you know, to be a, to, to get that amount of attention. And I've met lots of women like that in the past. I've met lots of men like that in the past as well. That just seem to get lots of attention. You know, they just seem to be a magnet. I worked with someone in insurance years ago. It was a long time ago. And he just... It's, I'd walk with him. Because he, he he really liked me, so he wanted to go out drinking with me and stuff. And I worked with him in the team with him next to him. And he kept saying, "Let's go out for a drink," and I said, "No." 
can't be bothered I see enough of you as it is you know standard stuff that I used to say to people because I didn't really want to spend time with people outside of work you spend 8 hours a day that's enough <laughs> that was always my attitude really but in the end I kind of gave up and said alright let's go for a drink and we did get on really well kind of almost best mates really I suppose and women were just literally uh, I say women a lot of women seemed to be just obsessed with him and I could understand it in a way but just like what what, what is it and the thing I didn't like about it is I thought well you know what I'm I've kind of done okay in my life I had lots of girlfriends and you know on my own I can go, I can get by you know with the way I look but standing next to him I must have looked like a scarecrow because you know he's, he's, that's the thing it's like actually I'm going to look <laughs> much much uh, less than I'd like to and so but because wherever he went they, he had followers he had female followers and it sounds it sounds like kind of made up and I was surprised because I hadn't seen that level before I've known lots of men and lots of women that have been really like they attracted the opposite sex or the same sex whatever but they they seem to attract literally like a magnet so he was one of them and um, but it was on a level that I'd yeah I don't think I've ever seen I've not seen it since either it was almost like um, how I imagine Someone like Brad Pitt or George Clooney, the kind of, if they weren't movie stars, they would still be. Someone like George Clooney with his personality, for example, and the way he looks and his personality, I imagine he could have, st he would have still um, been attractive, attractive to a lot of people. But would he have had that personality if he hadn't been famous? Because with fame and success can come confidence, I suppose. So he might not have had that confidence. I don't know. I'm just just talking for the sake of talking, really. But So I know it can be, it's like on one level, like, well, this is superficial because you're attracted to someone. Well, actually, that's not really superficial. That's just human. We're all attracted to people. We all are, aren't we? Whether it's men or women, uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic attraction. You could be attracted, we're attracted to our friends. We're attracted to our family members, you know, in a sense of there's an attraction there. Someone that you like, you're attracted to their personality or the way they behave. Like, you know, I've got an auntie that I'm that I really get on with. So there's an attraction there to, to her. Not a weird attraction, not some kind of uh call the police attraction. But it's an attraction, isn't it? It's being attracted to something. Being attracted to your iPhone. I'm attracted to my punch bag. I'm attracted to Andre because he's the cutest little little boy in the whole wide world. But you know, and if you've seen pictures of him, you'll you'll see what I mean because he is so cute. I just love him to bits so that's a different thing it's just but I'm attracted to him because he's 
I know him, I know his personality, but people are attracted to him. When I take him walking, people stop. Children, adults, other dogs. Not he's, I know he's not a dog, but he thinks he is, I think. But all kinds of like, people stop because he's so cute. Or there's that, oh, what is it? First of all, I have to say, well, it's not an it, it's a he. His name's Andre. I used to say that, I don't anymore. Is it a ferret? Is it a rat? Yes, it's a rat. Doesn't it look like a rat? When actually, when he's wet, he does look like a rat. But that's besides. I oh, actually, I was, I, I was giving him a big cuddle this morning because my nerves were all over the place as I was getting ready to go to that meeting to get this form filled in. So I had the bath running. And I was holding on to Andre and trying to just calm down because like holding him and stroking him and cuddling him, kissing him can help me uh, to just relax, you know. What I didn't realise is I'd spent way too much time standing over the bath while the bath was running. And Andre started to panic because he thought I was going to give him a bath. So I had to take him out of the bathroom. He started to shake, literally. I had to take him out of the bathroom. So it, it turned out that I was cuddling him to get comfort for me, and then I took him into the living room, and I was cuddling him to give him comfort and reassurance. Because although he does need to have a bath every now and then, it's... It is a for him it's a traumatic experience he doesn't like it generally doesn't like it and I don't like putting him through it so I would never do you know I only do it because I have to now and then and um, just you know just generally he's got self cleaning skin he's got oils and um, but he still gets muddy it's very, he does look after himself it's very clean um, but I, you know, so I ended up cuddling him to make him feel better. It's kind of weird. So I suppose we've got this mutual thing going on. Because he does when he's, when we're out, he's fearless. But at the same time, he wants me to be there. A lot of the time, you know, they keep climbing up, want me to hold on to him more. Especially if I stop and I talk to someone. So even if there's not a dog, a dog or anything, it's just me talking. Andre will climb up to get up for me to carry him, so I hold him, and he just lays there for as long as I'm talking for. Doesn't try and get down anything. He's just like clinging to me, so it's it's kind of weird, really. I don't know why. So anyway, so that bit about seeing someone that was that I was attracted to, not superficial, really. It's just being a human being, because and it's hard. I think it's hard for people to for some people to realise that. I think there's this thing that I've got a friend I've got this friend he said to me at the weekend I think I spoke to him and it did annoy me it's because he said this before and it's just just because uh, I don't know it just, <laughs> just really winds me up but he said um, talking about relationships I think he said yeah I think Oh yes, yeah, like we did meet someone that was, um, what was the way he termed? Uh, was it a suitable age, or that kind of term? Um, 
in other words, the same age as him. That's that's how he. Oh, a suit was it a suitable age or respectful age? It wasn't legal. It wasn't a legal age. But, uh, it was, so he puts. I kind of get a sense of this because I know some people put very um, limits on who they would be with, like or date. So I have no limits as long as it's legal. I have no limits. I don't care where someone's from. I don't care what the colour of the skin is of the person, what their language is. Where, what money they have, whether they can drive. I don't care how tall someone is, how much someone weighs, uh, body shape even, I'm not that bothered. It's, it's, I don't, you know, it's, because everybody's got their own individual uniqueness, haven't they? And I'm not bothered about age either. If I meet someone who's 75, and I fall in love with them, then I'm going to be with them if they want to be with me. I generally don't care. I mean, why? Why put limits on ourselves for happiness? Why limit our happiness by saying I'm only going to date someone between the ages of forty-one and uh, fifty-five, for example? Or 45 and 55. That's the only age gap I'm going to date. And they must be Caucasian. Or they must be from Scotland. Or they must have red hair. Or be a brunette. They must be shorter than me. They must be slimmer than me. Or they must be... uh, You know... Why? Why? I mean, in the past, it has been, I've avoided dating a taller woman, although I have dated taller women as well, but just thinking, oh, people might laugh at her. Not so much laughing at me, because I don't really care that much, but I didn't want people to be mocking her for dating someone that was shorter. But the the t- much taller lady that I dated, I knew that she could give way more better than she would get. So, although if anyone laughed at her, they would they would come second best. So, I knew she could take care of herself. So I wasn't worried about her feelings for that one. I was only young as well. I was just happy to have a hand to hold. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but like, what does it matter? I remember, seriously, I remember years ago. Oh, oh, it's another story. I'll tell that another time. But, but on the same side, what's wrong with going for what you like? So there's that not having any limit limitations, trying to like remove those limitations but not removing what you really like. So if you like someone with really big feet, then what's wrong with going for someone with really big feet? Or if you like someone that's really tall, you know, proper like six, nine, seven foot, if that's what you like, What on earth is wrong with that? Because that's not really superficial, I don't think. Going, f- you know, going for what you like is something really does it for you. I mean, really. Why on earth shouldn't you? If you're really attracted to someone with red hair. Or someone that has a lisp. That might sound like a weird attraction, but I I find that really cute. 
I don't know why. I don't know why. Genuinely do not know why. But when I hear uh, a woman talk, and she's got a bit of a lisp, I, I like it. My ears enjoy it. Like, I don't know why. Who knows? And I've, I don't know anybody in my life in the past that I could kind of trace it back to, you know? It's not like my grandmother had a lisp, so I had a... Um, so I had a very close bond to my grandmother. So it wasn't that. Maybe, maybe, maybe when I was in a children's home, one of the, the care workers there had a lisp. But it's too too long ago to me to remember. So maybe someone that I did see regularly and I perhaps really loved, felt attached to. And that's why I've got that connection. Who knows? I think it's fascinating. But I don't think that's I don't think it's superficial. Treating someone A certain way just because of how they look that's superficial only being nice to people because you're attracted to them superficial only giving someone a job because of how they look superficial but then that isn't that the workplace how it used to be or well, isn't it still like that it might not be based on how big your chest is or how tall you are or how strong you, how many muscles you've got or what kind of special beard you have. But if you go for a job in an office and you don't wear a suit and you turn up in flip-flops or a fireman's costume... Kind of like, you know, from the YMCA video. If you turn up like that for your interview, regardless of what qualifications and experience you've got, you possibly won't get the job. That's superficial, isn't it? <laughs> I'm also almost trying to justify my absolute... just my tongue just hanging out of my mouth <laughs> earlier on in the day with absolute wonder and you know I don't care it's okay to be attracted to people and I just there seems to be sometimes this thing where it's like oh you mustn't you mustn't now you're now a middle aged man you can't be attracted to people you're attracted to anymore it does seem to be that I have to pretend so I don't know what it's like for women because I've not asked any women uh, this question but I know I've got most of my uh, information from women about how <laughs> how men are supposed to behave when they're middle aged supposed to apparently and men are no longer supposed to be attracted to women that they're attracted to it's basically what they're saying. And the fact is men, as well as women, are attracted to who they're attracted to. We're just attracted to who we're attracted to. It doesn't it's not based on age. It's based on attraction. It's emotion. Logic don't come into it.
I do find it's kind of quite funny really because there seems to be this there seems to be a rule that if you've got kids <laughs> and if you've got teenagers so if, if a man's got a teenage daughter and then he's got a, a and the daughter's like in her 20s he can no longer be attracted so let's say he's got a 25 year old or a 30 year old daughter that morally or legally <laughs> societally he is no he's not allowed to be attracted to any female of that age when the reality is so to break it to you <laughs> those that maybe don't know they are still attracted to women of all ages regardless of whether they've got kids So I'm still attracted to, my attraction is broadened as far as the kind of women that I like because I always had an open mind to be fair because I remember looking in the mirror enough times during my adolescence to realise I'm going to have to have an open mind. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to be too fussy. So I kind of had an open mind. And even now, there's this girl, and she was she was young, and I was young at the time. I was what nineteen, and she was probably seventeen. I don't know, something like that. And I didn't ever date her, but we were very huggy, and I, I really, really liked her. And ever since, and um, she had her her face. Never since she had her face, but her face is whenever I see anybody that looks like her, and I've seen a few people, I become transfixed because it's almost like um, hard to explain, but I've met a few women that have had similar facial features to her so I don't know if it's just I, I was attracted to her face type or it was just her who I liked and then um, surrounded emotion around that facial structure it might sound strange you might think what do you mean facial structure well I can't explain it, but I could. If I, if I was a if I was a, an artist or a drawer, I could draw a picture and I could show you exactly because the image is in my head. Or so not all the time. I'm not walking around thinking about it all the time, but the image I remember what she looked like, like perfect image of what she looked like facially, and. So maybe that is superficial. But in a sense, that was based on emotion. Because I really liked her. She had a boyfriend and she got pregnant. And, you know, there was, there was kind of... I think had she not had a boyfriend and had she not been pregnant or got pregnant, I might have got together with her and I might still be with her who knows there's no way of knowing is it but there is an attraction there between us even if it was just friends but we like touching each other like cuddling and you know which is probably a bit more than just being friends but there was no romance and um, Yeah, that makes sense. But I think I'm trying to avoid talking about the form being filled in. Oh. 
so so I see this person walking by the other side of the street it wasn't really a big issue just oh hello just saw sort of like oh it's just a human being you know I'm, I'm very unsuperficial so I don't I'm never attracted to anyone ever because that would be superficial and of course if I was it'd have to be a 49 year old uh, female basically born on exactly the same day because uh, not allowed to be happy am I <laughs> I have to limit my happiness to just so I have to find someone that was born at the end of August 1970 so uh, I've, I've, I really do believe that everyone just chill out a bit and just do what makes you happy. Be with whoever makes you happy. Don't put too many limitations on it. And I, I love the term, the... What is it? Um, regret is worse than rejection. I, I never understood that term until I got a bit older. Um, I'm not sure if it's someone else's term or I just made it up but regret is way worse than rejection and I spent most of my life thinking that rejection was the worst thing and now at 49 I realised that actually no regret and the good thing about it is I've still got another 50 years so I'm only halfway through my life so I can maybe start looking at moments to not be regretful for although at the same time I think it's, it's just healthy to let that stuff go because it doesn't matter anymore So you imagine, even if all that stuff in our heads, you know, all the regrets and, oh, I should have done this, wish I'd done that, that is the equivalent of just never flushing your toilet. But keep using your toilet, but just never flushing it. Can you imagine the mess? You know, that's pretty much what's going on in our heads when we've got all that regret, when we're thinking about the past. Like, come on, just flush that toilet and let it go let it go away flush it away it's not needed, it's not helpful it's not useful doesn't make you feel wonderful does it? no let it go so I go into the place that's going to help me to fill in my form get in there at 5 past 1 in the afternoon and At half one, someone comes out and says, Jason? Uh, I said, yes, yes. So I come in. And right from the start, she was in a bad mood. And she told me she was in a bad mood. And she'd had a terrible day. And the first thing she said was, um, we should have made the appointment at one o'clock. Because this is going to take ages. And I like to do things properly. And I don't like to drive home when it's night, when it's dark at night. And whatever, I didn't listen to everything she said, but she had a lot of proper, it's basically, basically had a dump on me, a dump of negatives, negativity, uh, offloaded her annoyance of the day. <laughs> like, oh, lovely. And uh, I was just trying to hold it together to get through the experience that was about to occur and um, and I said to her okay right well what we need to do and she said no nope, I'll tell you what we need to do like no it's, it was very much trying to take control but I just 
I was going there, I knew what I wanted to be done and I was asking for her help to help me and what I needed from her, which I said is when I was here two years ago the man that helped me said that you photocopy all the documents before you send it away before you know give it to me to send away and you'll keep it on file and then next time you'll have all the information there to make it a bit easier to fill the form in so we know what I was said last time two years ago and she said no I said what she said no I said how dare you I didn't I said uh, what do you mean she said no it's, it's gone what do you mean it's gone it's been archived and then she said besides I like to fill the form in fresh I don't want to copy and I said it's not about copying it's so that I don't contradict myself from last time which I think is a fairly important thing so she called in a manager plus she couldn't get a computer started and uh, the manager said oh no it's archived I don't know why the person told you that and there was a few things that said well if I'm not mistaken doesn't archive mean something stored so at a later date you can retrieve it retrieve and she said it can't be retrieved and I said retrieve isn't that what archive means a place that you store something which you can retrieve because if it's not it therefore means it's just a bin or a shredder you've destroyed the information she said no it's not been destroyed it's been archived and it's kept at a different place so I said well can't you ask for it to be retrieved and she said no the lady's on holiday and I said there's a lot of obstacles here today isn't there a lot of obstacles and I could feel my calmness somewhat moving in energy <laughs> and uh, I said obstacles everywhere like little landmines no we haven't got it it's been archived Bang. but even if we could get it we can't because the lady's on holiday Barbara she's on holiday and we're short staffed and anyway I've had a bad day I don't need this hassle I can't get the computer started so uh, I kind of had to accept that situation that we needed to fill the form in from scratch and it's not a case of uh, making stuff up because I'm honest I, I try and be honest pretty much most of the time I know I make stuff up in recordings and I say silly stuff but generally um, you know my condition that I've got is bipolar affective disorder and I've got a emotionally unstable personality traits so that's kind of my official diagnosis from my psychologist and It was kind of weird sometimes, you know, writing down stuff and sort of explaining, trying to explain 
my situation and basing it on kind of the worst scenario the worst day you know and not every day is a worst day otherwise I wouldn't be here so every it's it's really hard to explain to someone or to write it down to have it understood because I kind of don't understand it myself if I'm honest but a mood for a mood disorder a mood issues it's changing that's the whole point is it's extreme changes of mood and at one point I said to her I'm not a zombie Because at one point she said, uh, it was about talking about money, and I said, well, I'm a little bit in debt with online catalogue. And she said, oh, but if you put down that, that'll prove that you've got an interest. So I'm not allowed to have an interest. I'm not allowed to be interested in anything. Because when I'm low, I've got no interest in anything. So that doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't... Um, it doesn't... It's just like, well, I'm, I'm still a human. I'm still... I'm still alive. I'm still functioning when I function. I just don't always function as well as other times sometimes I can't function at all but I'm still alive I'm not a zombie and there are times when I am interested in stuff and I've kept this online service that I do this free podcast and stuff that I've been doing since 2006 I've kept that going for years I'll admit I'm not always interested in it. There's been times when I've destroyed everything I have. I've destroyed so many different websites and got rid of podcasts, got rid of videos, YouTube channels. You know, I've, so yeah, there are times when I have uh, the complete opposite to being interested in this. But I keep coming back and I keep going. And this is probably my saviour, in a sense. But the idea that I'm not supposed to have anything that I'm interested in. Because if I'm interested in something, it proves that I'm fine. <laughs> it's like, what? Really? So this... You know, I see a psychologist regularly... It's now, it used to be every week, now it's every two weeks. And she seems to be the only person that understands my situation by talking to me, by getting to know me. And she realises exactly kind of what this lady today said to me. She said, she, she stopped at one point and she said to me, so, how old are you? I said, 49. She said, are you in a relationship? I said, no. She, so you said you live on your own? I said, yep. I thought she was coming on to me, seriously. And uh, she, she said, uh, something like, how come? How come you're on your own? How come you're not in a relationship with someone? And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you're quite an aff affable. I don't know what that means, but I think that she said that something, person, come across as... And that's the thing. That's what bugs me. That's what bugs me. This is turning to a moan, isn't it? So those of you that it's a little bit different from the rat, the average session... 
I think it seems that it's not just the general public. You know the you know this stigma. It's not just the general public. It's the professionals that also seem to have an issue that don't can't quite grasp the idea that somebody can be sitting in front of them talking articulately which I think I pretty much do looking absolutely fine not being aggressive not being uh, you know being able to interact being able to communicate being able to be there present in that moment being able to be humorous being able to be quick witted being able to um, show an interest in that other person the idea that that person is anything but totally well seems to be mind boggling for a lot of people and I'm, I'm talking about professional people professional as in with mental health care I'm not talking about all I'm just saying about some that I've met they can't get their head around it you must be fine because you look fine because you talk fine talking has never been a problem for me I think I've kind of proved that although sometimes I can't function to talk and I don't make recordings during that time but I might make a recording on that day because after six hours of being in bed I might actually come out of it with a bit of energy where I can just sit and make a recording which takes no physical energy at all just sitting talking and because talking comes so naturally to me and it flows and in some ways doing the hypnosis recordings is in some ways easier than actually talking normally it could give the impression that I'm just faking it I'm absolutely fine. That just seems a shame. Knowing that if I'm being treated like that, how are other people being treated? And what if they, how do they deal with it? I almost feel lucky that I've got these uh, this um, not release because I'm not doing it as a release but I've got this outlet this creative outlet that allows me to put energy into helping others hopefully and I say hopefully, I get told by people regularly that I'm helping them. But, you know, I I don't want to just assume, I can't assume that everyone listens, gets help, because I'm sure that's not the case. But I like to hope that, you know, I like to think that a lot of people do benefit. And also, I, I know, I really believe that those that don't benefit would not come back and listen. And I get a regular uh, listeners, you know, I get a regular uh, amount of, you know, thousands of listeners every day. So I know that they're not stupid. People that listen to these recordings are intelligent. And therefore you wouldn't listen unless you were gaining something from it. Just like I wouldn't listen... I listen to Jim Rohn, his audios, I listen, I watch his YouTube videos, 
I listen because I gain from it. Not just for the sake of watching it. If I didn't, I wouldn't I wouldn't watch it. You know. I listen to another one, I forget his name, and he's he's quite a big name on the motivational circuit. Uh he's done lots of audios and stuff. I didn't like his voice. I think it was he spoke too quickly for me. It's like really which is weird because Zig Ziglar talks quite quickly. Jim Rohn talks quite quickly sometimes. But he's so slow as well at times. He draws out words. and it's I suppose it's just in the delivery. I mean, there's a, a YouTube hypnotist. It's a lady, I forget her name. Very, very popular. Very popular. One of the top YouTube hypnotists. And uh, she almost sounds a bit like a robot. Very kind of monotone, but kind of robotic. But hugely, hugely popular. And so it's all down to what you like, isn't it? It's... Some people would prefer to have to hear an American voice. Some people would prefer to hear a Canadian voice. Uh, I'm no doubt that there's people in Scotland that would perhaps prefer to hear a Scottish voice, or people in uh, Ireland would perhaps prefer an Irish accent, or someone in Liverpool might prefer a Liverpool accent, or. In Australia, they might prefer an Australian accent. Or maybe in France, they prefer someone to be speaking in French. Or German, you know, going on and on like that. So, it's whatever. Everyone's got their own preference. And that's not superficial, I don't think. It's just, I love going back to the superficial bit. It's a preference. We've all got preferences. That's okay. I mean, superficial for me is someone that stops loving someone because they don't look exactly the way they looked when they met them 30 years ago. I mean, that's superficial. That's just ridiculous. No one looks the same way they did 30 years ago. So, not even me, <laughs> not even me. God, how old was I 30 years ago? So 1989, 99, 2009, 2019. So 1989, I was, I'd have just turned 19, I think. Wow. I'm still a virgin. Can you believe it? I'm still a virgin. Until I met Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. I even remember a surname. I'm not going to say it. But Michelle. 1990. On the living room floor. I think she was about 23, 24. And uh, of course, I should have dated someone of nineteen. I shouldn't. I should never have dated someone different age to me. Why should I be happy? But you know, I broke those rules. I dated her. I loved her and all that. And uh, yeah. So I was in this place doing the form. And it was, it was quite weird because I started off not being this lady's biggest fan <laughs> at the beginning. Um, and I probably wasn't, she wasn't my biggest fan. 
and then as the time went by and it did go by I mean it was that's a length of a date you know that's a length we could have had a meal and got drunk in that time and promised to call each other at the end of it and left knowing that neither of us were going to call each other so I just it got it was just it was just so tiring I just didn't I didn't even know how I was going to get to the bus I did feel like I could even, could even walk I just I went through the questions like one after another and each question had three parts and uh, in the end you know so what about the closing statement I mean, closing statement that's the kind of stuff you have when you apply for a university course a closing statement to talk about what you offer the course and what you gain to, from, want to gain from it and all that stuff like that come on man so I, I did I gave a, and I thought no I'm just going to be honest here I'm going to tell him how it is so I did so and she just wrote down what I said in the end she said uh, please please tell me that's all there is which is quite weird because 20 minutes earlier she was saying we need to have a closing statement can you please tell me something to write down and after she was writing, she said, oh, that's enough. No more. No more. No mass. So I said, okay. And then she went and photocopied it all. And we had a few laughs with each other during the, during the thing. At one point, she stopped and started talking to me, telling me about stuff about herself so we kind of I suppose it was it's that kind of relationship that you probably build in a lift or an elevator that breaks down so you're stuck waiting for the engineers to come and fix the fix it so we can move to the next floor and you can get out so to start with there's that just not wanting to talk to each other <laughs> and then eventually the barriers broke down and kind of was stuck in this together let's just make the best of it and then as we got close to the end uh, it was like I was there was a sense of we're getting to the near getting to the end of our sentence here you know, we'd be living in a cell together now we could get to get to li leave each other forever and then when we did say goodbye it was like oh it's like the freedom opening the door and you could just walk out into the freedom and I think she felt that as well I think she's oh so I um, then I went to the post office and it was quite I don't think ironic's the right word, but I had I don't know why but two of my neighbours I ended up taking packages for them to the post office to and pay for them to be delivered. Plus one of for myself, which was the one I paid seven pounds so it got delivered by tomorrow so I had all these packages to deliver which was like oh, oh. so I went into the post office which had been moved to a different building so I had to find that and then went in there and I queued up didn't have to wait long and, and when I got to the to the, the window you know to the, the, the man that was opposite he kept calling me sir and in a way that 
expressed his dissatisfaction with his job. He just really didn't seem very happy. And, um, or he was having a bad day or something like that. And I, I said to him, I just, I said, I need to pay for these and do them individually because I needed to get a receipt for each one individually. And, uh, he did all that he said the first one he said what's in it I said I don't know who's it from I don't know it's from a friend I said uh, I think the first one's got an album in it what's it of I don't know I really don't, didn't know what it was and uh, the second one I said I think that's a CD what's it of don't know because I don't and I mean, it's not like, well, I mean, if my neighbour had given me a package and it contained something that was going to get me in trouble, it'd be pretty stupid to give it to me. Because, you know, it's not going to end there. If he's, I'm not going to, I'm not taking a rap for anyone. Um, so, you know, he's, he's legitimate, he's genuine, he's a nice person, he just... He sells albums of himself because he used to, he was a um, a musician in the sixties in the psychedelic movement, so he's quite well known and he he's had quite a resurgence lately. He's quite big in China. He's been going to China like a couple of times a year, so he's he sells albums he sort of by the internet, and uh, he asked me just to post a couple for him. And um, and then I posted my friend's one, and I got a receipt for that. And then I posted mine, and I got a receipt for that. And I said, before that, I said, "How's how's the move gone? Like now that you're working from inside here rather than the other building?" He said, looked at me, and said, "Living the dream." <laughs> so I thought, okay. And uh, he just yeah, he looked he looked quite stressed. So maybe I imagine doing that kind of job. Um, I've done I've had quite a few customer service jobs over the years, and when you're customer facing, it's there's a certain um, level of fakeness that needs to be there. Uh, especially if you're like me and you're a bit moody well I'm probably a lot moody but but working in a factory I could kind of that was always I found that easier because I could just get on with the work didn't have to talk to anyone didn't have to put on a, a pretend happy face or anything because from the other side I understand that actually if someone goes into a shop or a post office or news agents or whatever they want they don't want a grumpy person there they just you know they want to see a friendly face because it, it just makes a difference I think so it, it's a I'm probably not the best customer facing person myself I am when I'm when I'm on one, when I'm in a good mood, when I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm probably among the best uh, public faces. But uh, same as when I used to do telephone sales, it was easy, easy, easy. If I was in a up mood. But wow, was it a challenge on the days when I wasn't. So then it got to a point where I was kind of faking and ignoring how I was really feeling. And I think it's important that we don't do that. It's good to address how we're feeling. 
don't let it control you but just address it notice make changes because for things to change for you you've got to change yeah baby so I did that I went to the shop got some food and I then waited for 25 minutes for the bus got on the bus which <laughs> just it's quite a long bus journey and I walked home and I, f I could feel every footstep I just uh, uh, it's just and I felt like I had to have big metal shoes on and like the earth's core was magnetised and just my feet were sticking to the ground extra extra amount of uh, what do you call it what's that stuff that sticks us to the, to the ground see your brain's gone now not Leviton, Everton, Evian, that's water, isn't it? Oh man, my mind's gone completely, completely, I kind of fallen asleep, I think. Gravity, oh dear, I can't believe I forgot the word gravity. Anyway, I got home. I had so I thought I'd be alright if I was got home had my tea cakes I had a couple of tea cakes and I sit down on my chair having them and I just relax and I'd be fine but I couldn't I needed to lay down so I never lay down when I, just after I've eaten but I couldn't not I had to lay down I couldn't even laying back in a chair wasn't enough. I had to move from being awake to being asleep to... Plus I had a headache as well. I took some tablets for that. But I needed to remove, almost wipe away the day <laughs> by going to sleep. And... That's what happened. I fell asleep. And that was about half six. I woke up at half nine. I really did feel different. I felt a lot different. I felt... Um, not fully recovered, but definitely took the edge off once I'd had some sleep and what I did tonight something that I don't normally do I don't normally get takeaway food but I treated myself to a pizza and it's in the in Domino's they do a Tuesday two for two or two for one so you buy one pizza you get two pizzas so you get the, the second one free so what I did is I bought sweet and sweet corn and pineapple pizza for myself and I ordered uh, another one and I gave it to my neighbour downstairs because uh, I didn't want to eat two pizzas one's enough for me so I gave that one away but I wasn't going to get just one pizza and pay for that when I can get two for the same price so uh, I gave that to him came back had my pizza I felt better after that as well because it was a nice I know it's carbs but I felt physically and emotionally actually a bit uplifted after eating the pizza and it is my favourite pizza sweet corn pineapple I rarely have it you know once a year maybe if that so it's not a, like a regular thing 
due to the cost it's too expensive but I just felt I had to because I couldn't face cooking I couldn't I couldn't just the idea of even just heating the oven up and putting something in there for 50 minutes or 40 minutes I just I couldn't couldn't face it so had the pizza and watched a little bit of telly while I was eating that I feel really relaxed I feel really relaxed and uh, I took a medication with the pizza because I didn't take any yesterday because I didn't eat I didn't have any meal yesterday so I only took a medication when I have a, have a meal and for some reason yesterday I didn't I forgot and And then I thought, because I wasn't expecting to make any recordings today, I wasn't sure if I'll make any this week really, because I haven't really been feeling it. But then I thought, you know what? Oh well, I'll just make a, a let me boy to sleep. But at the beginning, as I did, just to kind of let you know that I'll be talking about some not serious stuff, I suppose it, some of it's kind of serious, but just more kind of a bit more real than sometimes I do. But I did, I did say that at the beginning, and uh, that brings me to the end of this recording. So I think. Thank you for listening and I I will be back again soon and the next one will be silly I'll make sure it's extra silly so thanks for listening lots of love and remember to be kind to yourself and remember I'm going to continue remember don't put limitations on your own happiness because you deserve to be happy. Bye.